I've mashed your goonities with something a little weird, but I hope you like it. Hello everybody. So a long time ago I made a plant dragon deck like a weird personal version that I was running for a while. It involved Distrudo and a lot of other things and I had gotten comments to update it and unfortunately you know because of all the broken synchro stuff going on with Master Roll 5 and stuff, uh, Distrudo was banned, Glow Up Bulb was banned and I understand for a lot of the meta decks they just caused crazy plays but they were also super vital for like the plant dragon deck I had made for fun on the side and so I've been experimenting with a lot of different things and honestly now that I've gotten to this point with this deck there's still some stuff I do want to tweak around and change but that's the best part of making that these videos is I get to showcase you guys new ideas that I'm going into and you guys also get to give me your criticisms and opinions of what I can do to make this deck better so without further ado here is my dragon plant so to start off with your monsters, um, this is a little bit weird ratios now from my last um, profile and a lot of other decks that I've made, but I'm running two ducks. Uh, this is probably going to go to three because of my current testing. Uh, three Phalanx, one Coos, and one Mistleton. Um, so the reason why for these ratios, and honestly going forward, Coos is probably going to get dropped for just a sec second Mistleton or even the third Ducks. Uh, the main reason I don't like Coos, he's honestly in here just for an extra name and for an extra card to Constantist target, which I agree isn't a very good reason to have a card, but he does still help the overall flow of the deck. But I mainly don't like him because he can only be used for a Dragoonity. So after you make that Vadriana with him, unless you plan on making the level 10, which since it targets, I don't think it's that that great anymore. Um, you can't really use him for a crystal wing or anything else, and I, I really hate that restriction on him. So that that's mainly why um, he's at one. Then for some other dragons we run in this deck, I am running one debris dragon, mainly because he's wind, he's a tuner. Um, he does help me just sometimes get easy link plays off that I need really quick, or um, different um, plays that I can make in this deck. Uh, in testing, he's been a little slow opening him up, but overall, he's still just a dragon you can dump and send with a lot of different things. We do run the one white rose dragon to splash the board a little bit more for when you don't get a perfect combo hand. Um, and then, of course, next up, one of the best cards in the deck is we do run the Supreme Cream Dragon Dark Worm, and we run the Donut, because in this deck you do need a lot of the extra stuff to dump to the hand, uh, grave from hand for a lot of your effects. And this combo is just always nice if he's your first card you're going to summon. Um, for your last uh, ge generic dragon of the deck, of course we do run one Tempest. He's not only a 2400 beater, he's level 7, um, which is not really relevant to this deck, but for other decks he's really splashable for that purpose. He's a wind, uh, you can utilize this effect in multiple ways with this deck, and he's just a nice extra card to push for. Then continuing on with your monsters, um, we do run one Mist Valley Apex Avion, and uh, I'll get into why we run this um, at the end, but I think it's pretty obvious to most of you who've been keeping up with new cards that have come out. Um, and now we get to go on to the plants that I choose to run. So if you watched my last profile, I do run three Evil Thorn. Um, if you don't know what this card does, as you contribute this card and inflict 300 damage to your opponent, and then summon two more of him from, in attack position from the deck. Um, and he's level one, so he's a nice one for one target, and he's part of a nice little combo that I'll show you at the end of this uh, video. Um, only one Lone Fire Blossom. I know that might be crazy to some, but uh, you're not really gonna try to normal summon a lot of times in this deck and or do anything like that, and you're not running really any other crazy plants. I've tried to make this a little bit more plant-based before, and I just can't find a way to make it work. If, if you can, uh, let me know in the comment section below, but I just have the one Lone Fire Blossom for now. Um, one Spore, because we still need some sort of plant tuner in the deck just because. Um, it really sucks we don't have Glow Up Bulb, but at least Spore can still recur and also manipulate his level, which could help you in some cases. Uh, the one Orphus Scorpio and one Darlington Cobra. This really kills me because I still want to try to find place for a second Darlington Cobra because I absolutely hate when you draw it. It literally deads like the best combos this deck can do. But um, you can still do other stuff. It's just if you do draw this, it is really bad. So I am trying to test this deck a little bit more to see if I can afford to just run more another one. But let's be honest, drawing two is even worse than one. So that's why you play the gamble of only having it at one. Then we do run uh, Itali in this deck. So our three targets are Wielder, Tracker, and uh, Pilika. Mainly because Pilika can get uh, like a Phalanx or something out of your grave. And um, 
just potentially help you do more plays. It's just for after you use her, you're restricted to only summoning wind monsters for the rest of your turn. But for the most part, that doesn't really affect you too much. Um, and these guys are honestly in here just to make beast still because glow up bulb uh, helped us make beast really easy in this deck. I used to run the performer power engine and stuff since we were discarding a lot of stuff from our hands so much. But um, for now, I'm just testing these out to see how they do with just honestly helping this deck be able to synchro and link a little bit easier if it needs to. Then for our spell cards, as we do run three Dragon Ravine, and even though we can make Romulus and we do run one Romulus, I still run the one terraforming. Uh, mainly because, just like most dragon decks, dumping a lot of stuff or setting up your graveyard or hand with other different dragons or Dragoonity's uh, Dragon's Ravine actually having us dual use for us, being able to search a level four or lower Dragoonity monster, uh, it becomes more important in this deck. So I like the terraforming at one as well. Two Dragon Shrine, I've tried it at three, but I keep seeing it too much in the same opening hands when it was at three, as much as it was nice to see it a lot more often. But I'm testing it back down to two at net for now. Um, if I were to ever put it back at three, this is the card I would probably drop to two. Um, I love World Legacy Guard Dragon because we have tons of targets in our deck. It's just we're no longer running the Guard Dragons because a lot of people are sick of seeing Guard Dragons. I didn't want to just bring another generic Guard Dragon profile. And when... Uh, Red Eyes Darkness Metal becomes a Radit. I don't want to have to figure out different little loopholes in my play in order to make like Double Star Yuja and stuff like that a lot more easy um, and stuff. So uh, yeah, I'm running this at three mainly just because it does help push in this deck, but it's not really necessary for a lot of crazy plays, which I do like. Uh, maining two called by just for the simple purpose that, you know, you're not running any hand traps yourself in this deck and called by definitely helps you um, just sometimes save yourself from a sticky situation. Um, if you were to make some cuts of some of my choice cards, like Debris Dragon and stuff, uh, that you might feel are a little bit more niche, I would definitely pump cards I called by up to three instead of running those cards. Then I do run two cards of consonants because I've tried to play without this card, even though my tutor count has gone way lower, but same way, like it could just help with um, dumping the right dragons to the graveyard. Sometimes getting that Phalanx in Grave and being able to draw off of it is really nice. So I still keep Cards of Consonant at two. I did used to run three, but that's when we ran Destrudos and a lot more tuners that could be pitched um, to draw. For your one ofs to finish off the deck, uh, as mentioned earlier, we have one Emergency Teleport, just an extender, really good for this deck. Uh, one Instant Fusion for um, honestly only one card you run in the extra deck as a target. One one for one and a foolish burial. Um, pretty much all these four cards, your one ofs, are some of your most powerful ones. Um, these three being limited for a reason, you know? Like, but hey, they do get a lot of stuff started for this deck. Now for the extra deck. We'll start with our synchros. So we run two Vadriana because um, we don't really, really feel the need. Uh, I know that a lot of the other Dragoonities are good, like there's the one that can gain attack, there's, you know, the level 10 that can banish a card. Um, I just like to go short and sweet and get to an actual, like, better Synchro Monster personally. To, so to pair with the Vajrianas, we do run two Crystal Wing, just because um, you can make this probably not two in one turn, but you can make it very easily in this deck if you can just keep getting a Dux to your hand. Um, then of course, not only just because we're plants, but because it's a good card and sometimes we need to wipe a board, we do run one Black Rose Dragon, um, mainly just to fit the theme of the deck and because I think it's an amazing, beautiful card. Um, that's our only level seven of the deck. Uh, one Trishula, because we can get a lot of monsters out on the field, do have a lot of level threes, um, and we can use all three of them to make a level nine. So Trishula, why not make one of the most annoying cards in the game? Uh, one Stardust because he's wind and um, with Pilika a lot of the times all you're gonna do is be able to make a level 8 because you pair her with probably another level 3 and the uh, Phalanx you summon from the grave with her. Um, and yeah, so um, Stardust just to help protect your boards a little bit more. Still run the Beast even though you only have a Saki way of playing it because Beast is amazing. Um, for our links, it's just a bunch of one ofs and they're subject to change because I have wanted to cut a lot of the Saki like e telly cards out of this deck and probably try to figure out how um, Needle Fiber could fit in this deck um, really well because I'm, I mean, he's 
good in any deck with tuners essentially, but I haven't, I've put them in other decks for now, but I'll try to think of something if you guys want to see a variant with that. Let me know in the comments down below. But for our links, we run one Aro Roma Seraphie Jasmine. She's pretty important for a combo in this deck. Uh, one Heretic Seal just because, you know, you don't really have many interrupts um, unless you get the perfect board in this uh, game or in this deck. And, um... Although the extra monster zone isn't as abused in this deck, I still run this for now, but um, he's probably going to fall out for another synchro monster. Then we do run the one Romulus just in case uh, you really need to get to a dra uh, dragon uh, ravine and you didn't get any other way to get to it. Uh, Romulus is just nice um, to help you with your Dragoonity plays. Then we do run one Samorg, who's just amazing in this deck. He helps you get your Apex Avion out from the deck, which is just free interruption on your board, which is just helps a deck like this that struggles to really get any advantage out. One Saryuja to fix your hands, even though we're not running the Guard Dragons. With random crap in your hand, you can splash a lot of monsters and just fix stuff with Saryuja. Um, one Mavilus, which is our only um, instant fusion target. It helps to make some org if you don't have a wing beast on board, and it also helps um, to make a crystal wing if you have a phalanx in hand and nothing else. Uh, you could just synchro with uh, summon the phalanx, instant fusion for this, make a Vadriana, special summon the phalanx, and make a crystal wing. Um, so it's pretty tacky and pretty but it comes in handy and it's pretty nice and then another personal thing that i um put in this deck just mainly because i needed something that helped to do a little bit somewhat of interruption is i am running one bamboozling gossip shadow so if you don't know what this card does it's uh once per turn when a monster activates its effect quick effect you can detach two materials from this card and the activated effect becomes both players draw one card so it's uh it changes the effect of a monster so it is an interruption and i like because sometimes when i was testing combat Combos with this deck, I kept ending up with two extra level threes on my board, and I'm like, what am I gonna use to make these? And I'm sure there's better options out there as I test further, but I wasn't about to make a Zen mains in today's format, you know? So I'll show you guys a little something at the end of this video of what I've been able to do with this deck in testing, and uh, maybe you guys can give some tips to the Yigibu team on how we could take plants to the next level. All right, so as promised, here's a little combo. It is just a four card combo, which I know is a little sacky with the ratios of this deck, but for all of intensive purposes and just the purpose of the combo, if you have these four cards in your hand, I'll show you a little something you can do. So what you would do here is you would open up with your Dragon Shrine, right? And you would send your Dark Worm, you know, from your deck to the graveyard. And of course, from here, you summon your Dark Worm, and for all intents and purposes, let's say we're gonna use this zone. So make sure you summon your Dark Worm either here or here. And then, of course, your Dark Worm effect is going to activate to search out your donut. Now, this is your hand. And then, of course, we'll just, you know, for the sake of duel, you'll have uh, one more mystery card in your hand. And who knows what that would be, you know? Um, then from here, after that, you're going to want to use your one for one. And then now, you know, you can pitch your donut for a cost of your one for one. And you're going to summon Evil Thorn from your deck. And then remember, Evil Thorn's effect, you're going to tribute his card, flick 300 damage to your opponent randomly. Summon two more Evil Thorn from your deck and attack position. Next, you're going to use these two Evil Thorn to Link Summon for Aroma Seraphy Jasmine, because she takes two plant monsters. And her effect, the first part, if your opponent's life points are higher than, uh, if your high, life points are higher than the opponent's, this card and any plant monster cannot be destroyed by battle. It's pretty irrelevant because you're just going to use her pretty quickly, but she can tribute one monster she points to to special summon a plant monster from your deck in defense position. Effects not negated or anything. And, um, you know, then she has an effect to add a plant if you gain life points, but you're not doing that either. But anyway, so that's just a little history on Jasmine. So you're going to activate her effect to tribute your Dark Worm. Um, well, obviously this would go away over here. Then you're going to summon any plant from your deck. So you'll summon your Lone Fire Blossom, tribute your Lone Fire Blossom, summon your Orphis Scorpio, Orphis Scorpio's effect. You'll pitch your Phalanx from your hand to the gra grave, and then you'll summon your Darlington Cobra from the deck. With Darlington Cobra, you're going to hit, go ahead and search your one instant fusion. Now you have these two cards plus a mystery card in your hand. Um, then from here, um, this is when you're going to go ahead and normal summon your ducks. Um, your ducks is going to go ahead and summon or equip your phalanx from grave. You're going to special summon your phalanx, synchro these for six. It's going to summon your Vajrayana. Your Vajrayana is going to equip your phalanx. You're going to special summon, synchro again, and bam, now you have a crystal wing. Um, you don't have to put it here, but just because I'd like to put it there. The next, you're going to go ahead and activate that instant fusion that's in your hand. 
You're going to summon your Malvilus, then with a Link 2 and this one Winged Beast monster, you're going to go ahead and Link away for your Samorg. Then after you make some org, you're going to exceed these two monsters for your bamboozling gossip shadow to help interrupt another monster. And then, as we all know, because of Samorg, when you end your turn, you're going to get a Miss Valley Apex Avion from your deck to the field, adding another negate for a pesky spell or trap they might have. And if they don't open too well, you know, you technically have three negates going first, and for a random Dragoonity plant deck, I feel like this isn't too bad of a combo. But let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think, and please help us make Dragoonities the most powerful dragons once more. Thanks for watching, y'all. Thank you.